Hi guys, Ali Tetrick here, and uh, be prepared to be inspired for this week's installment of the Big Girl Shammy Show. My special guest is Sophia Gibson, and she is the first child of gravel that I know. She literally was born and raised on gravel. Her father, Randy, was a legendary gravel cyclist. He helped start Gravel Worlds. He's traveled all around and raced as a professional and attended gravel events. And his daughter, Sophia, was right there with him. It's been a pretty traumatic couple years for her. Her father was unfortunately killed while riding his bicycle by a drunk driver. And since then, Sophia has continued to volunteer and support gravel events. But this last year, she lined up to race Gravel Worlds along with her mother. And she conquered a wall that she didn't know she could. And she overcame obstacles that she had previously thought impossible. I um, have to thank you, Sophia, for being on the Big Girl Shammy Show. I'm really excited to have you here. Thank you. I am so happy to be here. I feel so honored. Often when I tell my story about how I got into cycling um, and then now gravel is, you know, I didn't know cycling was in my blood and I didn't realize that till I was 24 years old. Um, but you have a different story where you learned like cycling was in your blood your entire life and you just now have found the love of gravel for like your own right, personal yeah. experience, right? Yeah, yeah, like growing up, like my dad was a pro when I was born and then we moved up here to Nebraska when I was, you know, two and he was always riding bikes, you know, he'd ride to work every day, he would go on century rides every weekend but I was never too interested in it. It was like, okay, I have a big old heavy mountain bike. Like I don't really want to go and ride this. It's not too enjoyable. So then in the last like year and a half, I've just like made it into my own and made it something that I enjoy and I love, which is just so amazing. That's so great. I, um, I, I have known you now for over three years. So we're going on almost, well, actually almost four years that we've known each other. Um, and the minute I met you, I was just, I mean, obviously you've inspired me in so many ways, which we're going to get into. Uh, I just gave you the chills and I might tear up, but I, um, and so many times when I've gone to Lincoln, Nebraska to race gravel worlds, you're the reason I go hard and get across that finish line is because of you. So, oh my gosh, <laughs> we're gonna, um, <laughs> you're going to make me cry. <laughs> I just, I met, I met Sophia guys and uh, she was just my sister and we looked at each other. We're like, loved our style. We took a shot of whiskey and we basically fell in love. <laughs> we found out we both love horses. And so that was the moment we were like, okay, wait, you're really cool. Like, I really like you. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about for the to listener about Gravel World, what it means to you and why. Um, and also to tell them how the courses are and what it's like. Yeah, so I have been around Gravel World since the start. It started in a farm front yard with like about, I want to say like 20 people. And I was there for the first one. My dad like set off at I think like 4.30, 5.30 in the morning. And it was like one of those cool experiences where I could tell it was going to be something larger than it was in that like time. And so over the years, it just got larger. Like they'd add like hundreds of people. And so I've gotten involved probably really heavily in the last four years. Um, I would volunteer with like check-in, um, getting everyone their t-shirts, et cetera. And then I would go out to a checkpoint and, you know, hand out water, food, any help I could. Cause I always just love the environment of it. Like you would go to a checkpoint and you would see all these people from all around the world and they're all like good people. I have, just this strong belief that anyone who rides a bike passionately is a good person. And so I just love the energy being around all those people. So then last year was my first year doing gravel world. Um, and I had decided that I was going to do it probably like a month and a half before, um, race date. And so doing it was just a whole different experience than volunteering because you were really in it and you learned what it was all about. 
And so meeting all those people out on the course rather than like the two second exchange you get while volunteering was just really insightful. And I got to make a lot of friends through it. Um, it's just a really welcoming community at that race. It's really, you know, as much as it is about the race, it's about the people and the environment that they culture. So it's just, I don't know. I, it's my favorite day of the year. Like I was going to miss one of my best friend's weddings this year, as horrible as that sounds because gravel worlds was this year. And sadly it got canceled, but it really is one of those days that gives you all the good feels, all the hugs, all the just love from everyone in the community. That's so cool. Um, yeah, the first time I went to gravel worlds, um, I got to meet you, which was amazing. Um, and you know, there's several distances, of course, but it starts and finishes in Lincoln, Nebraska. And um, I think that your gravel in Lincoln, Nebraska is some of the best gravel ever. Um, yeah. I remember I came out back on course to go cheer on some people a couple K to go, and I was walking barefoot on the gravel. It was like gravel yeah. you, you like put on driveway or something you know you could just pat around on a barefoot yeah. so tell us a little bit about the terrain and how um is, is nebraska flat is, are there long climbs is it windy hot yeah so definitely gravel worlds in august it's gonna be hot we're very humid so it's gonna be pretty muggy um but as far as like the terrain i'm a nebraska girl so i've been raised on these gravel roads so to me, it's just normal. But then you go somewhere else where it's just super rocky and coarse and it's more technical. And so here in Nebraska, the real challenge for me, at least, is the hills because they have so many hills in this course. They make it like that on purpose. I swear they just want to torture us. But you don't think you can get up some of those hills here in Nebraska. And you think Nebraska is flat like that, you know, you, that's just the, I guess that's just our, um, what we're known for, but there are some killer hills. So we have a lot of hills, a lot of heat, a lot of humidity. Um, but it's so beautiful. Like a lot of people who come here think you're just going to see cornfields, but we have prairie lands. We have so many cool, interesting animals, so many cool like barns on the side of the road. So you ne you never like go a mile without seeing something that's going to blow your mind. Yeah, I agree. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and it's a fast course. Like it isn't super chunky gravel. Um, it's, right. it's like fishbowl gravel. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You just glide right over it. I mean, there are some spots that get a little technical, but for the most, like it's pretty smooth and smooth rolling. Yeah. It's super cool. So, um, I was just really excited to see you toe the line. Um, last year and I think it was a big step for you and um I uh I, I'm, I'm gonna segue into this and I'm not trying to take up too much of the spotlight but my big girl chamois moment which is where this quote originated actually Sophia was there and it was at gravel worlds and it sounds like a princess thing to say but I really just didn't want to race I, I traveled to Nebraska I was there and I just had lost some um, loved ones that year and it was a very stressful year and I was just not feeling it and very bitter <laughs> to be there but I knew I needed to be there in a lot of reasons and yeah. to see Sophia be so brave and to show up and do the event made me realize a my problems were not important <laughs> and also I needed to put on my big girl chamois and just do it and do it right and so that was one of my favorite wins of my entire career and honestly one of the best days on the bike because I just owned what I needed to do and overcome pressure and my own insecurities and feeling sorry for myself. Yeah. And you were such a part of that statement that I told Christy, which is how we got this whole podcast started. So um, drum roll, please. I want to hear about your big girl chamois moment. Yeah. So uh, for those of you who don't know, um, my dad was a big part of the cycling community here in Lincoln, Nebraska, and really all over the country. Um, he was the reason that Gravel Worlds is as large as it was. Well, one of the reasons, um, and still is. And so he was 
hit and killed by a drunk driver while riding his bike um, just about three years ago. And so they have a jersey um, in honor of him that Allison has won now two years in a row. And it is, the winner, well, I guess the first one up this giant hill called the Denton Wall. And when you see it, it's like flat. Like you do not think you can go up it. And so they have that in honor of my dad. First male and female up there gets a jersey. And so I had gone through that course so many times I had gone up that hill. Like usually there's some killer dogs down at the bottom that you're trying to get away from, but you just have to still hop off the bike and kick the dogs away. So I always hop off cause I just can't make it up. But during gravel world last year, I was like, I have to make it up. There is no way I can't like my dad was killer at this. Like it's in my genes. I have to do it. And so I just turtled it up that hill and I was crawling and there's people like on either side of me cheering me on. I don't think I can do it. I'm crying like buckets. People are like, what's wrong with you? Cause they don't know my backstory. And I'm just like bawling, crawling up this hill. And finally I make it. And I just couldn't believe it. I like looked back and I was like, wait, I did that. I, I really like, I just did that. What? I didn't think I was capable And so that was one of the moments, like, I'll never forget. It was just, it was indescribable. And I just felt like I was on top of the world and I could accomplish anything. That's awesome. What did, uh, like, what did you learn from that? Do you now know that you're capable or? Oh, yeah. Like, I have a lot more confidence in myself. Like, and I know I can set larger goals for myself because I don't think I truly believed in myself going up that hill before. I was always like, you know, it's the Denton wall. It has this reputation that everyone walks it, you know, except for the Allison's of the world. But then while I got, you know, while I was climbing it, I was like, I've got to do this. Like, there's no way I can. And so when I set my mind to it, I knew that I could accomplish it. That is so awesome. I think the first year I did that, it was, I think it was only in the course the second year, which is the first year it was in honor of your dad. And I think you were on that hill cheering me on. And I'm pretty sure I almost fell over. It's very steep, guys. <laughs> it is very steep. Oh, yeah. I am just so proud of you for finishing um, that event. Um, and I know that you're going to have more gravel racing in your future. Do you have any more events when they start again, what you're going to do or? Yeah, so we have another cool event here in Nebraska. It's the um, Solstice Ride. Uh, It was supposed to happen this month, but sadly it got pushed back. Um, So hopefully we'll be able to do it in September. Um, I always go up to the Gold Rush Gravel Grinder up in Spearfish, South Dakota, which has a lot of meaning to me. I went up with my dad every year, um, and I would cheer him on, and I would help with the race and just, you know, meet a lot of cool people. But this was actually going to be the first year that I was going to do it. So hopefully it'll be back up and running next year. Um, But other than that, like those are the three I love. Um, There's the Cornhusker State Games that I also did this past year, uh, which was really fun. I ended up placing, it was my second race and I ended up uh, placing third in that. And so that was really cool. And then there's also um, another Nebraska ride, which is the Husker Hundo, which is also super fun. So, yeah, Nebraska has a lot of cool rides. I don't think we get enough recognition for how cool our roads are and our races are. So hopefully people will start discovering that throughout the years. That's so cool. So thank you so much for being here. I'm going to wrap it up with a couple quick fire questions that I have not warned you about. So oh just <laughs> one word answers, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna kick it off. Okay, you ready? Okay. Right. Uh, Whiskey ready or beer? <laughs> Whiskey or beer? Beer, but white claws. <laughs> it's Nebraska or Arizona? Arizona. <laughs> um. Ooh, this one's gonna be really hard. I don't want to make it hard, but I'm going to. Kids or horses? I'm a nanny and I ride horses. What are you doing to me, woman? Okay, uh, kids, because I love them so much. Okay, cowboy boots or heels? Cowboy boots. Okay, Daisy Dukes or sequins? Daisy Dukes. I know it's hard, right? I, I got you. <laughs> um, oh, boy. Wind or hills? Okay, what, what was the first one? Wind or hills? Okay. Hills. They're more rewarding. Okay. Uh, beach or mountains? Beach. And last one, manicure or pedicure? 
manicure. Got it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, Sophia. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Love you. <laughs> Bye.